they propose that an increase in plasma glutamate is a pathogenic factor in its own right and is responsible for the decrease in intracellular glutathione in HIV patients. This same phenomenon of depletion of cysteine leading to depletion of glutamine leading to increased serum glutamate leading to a blockade of cellular cysteine uptake is also what causes reduced immune function in advanced cancer patients. So you might want to pause the video and let all of that sink in. Meanwhile, I'm going to move on to the next page. Adequate glutathione and cysteine is necessary for immune function. I'm going to say that again. Adequate glutathione and cysteine is necessary for immune function. So I want you to think of cysteine not simply as a structural building block for the tripeptide antioxidant glutathione. I want you to think of cysteine as being basically a fuel for the immune system. Now we're all used to thinking of glutamine as a fuel for the immune system, so just add one more amino acid to that list, and I want you to think of cysteine as being necessary for immune function as if it were a fuel. It is a necessary biochemical and nutritional component for effective and competent immune function. If cysteine is depleted through oxidant stress or viral replication, then the immune function is going to be decreased because of that. Depletion of cysteine causes immune suppression both quantitatively and qualitatively. And I'll say that again. Depletion of cysteine causes immune suppression quantitatively and qualitatively. Let's look at the details here. Glutathione, as we all know, is a cysteine-containing tripeptide. Glutathione has a wide variety of physiological roles, including signal transduction, also intracellular defense against oxidative stress. Systemic defense against drug toxicity, central to the regulation of the metabolic and cell cycle. It also regulates T cell and natural killer cell function, so that's obviously the immune system. Low glutathione in T cells impairs interleukin-2 production, interleukin-2 response, and cytotoxic T cell activity. That's critical for the destruction of cells that are infected with intracellular pathogens such as viruses and bacteria such as mycobacterium tuberculosis. Number eight on my list, low glutathione in NK cells impairs their killing activity. Low glutathione in antigen-presenting cells impairs interleukin-12 production and favors a Th2 response over a Th1 response. And it's the Th1 response, not the Th2 response, that is important for antiviral immunity. Everyone is taught that the Th2 effect is more important, and that's because that's the model that's used to sell vaccines. But the reality is, is that the Th1 response is at least, if not more important, than the Th2 response. As I already stated, cysteine depletion leads to glutamine depletion. So I call that the sacrifice of cysteine for the salvation of glutamine. When cysteine depletion leads to glutamine depletion, this results in leaky gut bacterial translocation that promotes additional infection and inflammation and it releases pro-inflammatory TLR4 signaling, and that leads to excess or exaggerated inflammation and also other immune impairments. Loss of cysteine and glutathione leads to more viral replication, so that increases the viral load, and loss of cysteine and glutathione leads to more viral mutation, and that leads to increased immune escape and the continuation of these viral infections. A lot of the information that we're going to discuss right now is contextualized within my largest textbook, which is Inflammation Mastery 4th Edition. You can find out more about this book at various websites, including inflammationmastery.com and ichnfm.org. Inflammation Mastery is still my major book, even though I've derived some other books from it, such as Brain Inflammation, Pain Revolution in Chronic Pain, Migraine, and Fibromyalgia, also Human Microbiome and Dysbiosis and Clinical Disease, was extracted from chapter four, as was antiviral nutrition and the paper version of that same book, which is antiviral strategies and immune nutrition. Inflammation Mastery is really 25 books in one book, and I'll show you how that works out mathematically in just a moment. It's available as a paper book, which usually provides the deepest level of uh, comprehension, but it's also available as a more easily portable and searchable digital book, as you can see here which enables people to use the digital search feature word for word. Some of my other articles and presentation transcripts are available at my academia page, as you can see here, also on ResearchGate. 
Video archives have been updated recently and expanded to include two new channels on BitChute and Brighteon. As I mentioned before, Inflammation Mastery is really 25 books in one. A typical book has about 60,000 words. Inflammation Mastery has 1.5 million words, which means it's equal to 25 books. So if someone paid $200 for Inflammation Mastery, that would be $8 per section. Again, 25 books all bound in one book at again 1.5 million words. For healthcare professionals, this is of course a tax deductible business expense and of course, increased clinical talent pays for itself.